Training masks have been said to emulate the physiological response of high altitude training. Claims that through this resistance, one can significantly improve their efficiency for oxygen consumption, leading to breaking through cardiovascular limits, enhance muscular endurance, as well as other super physiological responses. Is this too good to be true? Well, I decided to put this to the test. This video is my journey wearing a training mask for an entire week straight. But you gotta focus. So I've got my altitude mask right here. Performance Breathing Trainer 2.0. From what I was reading, it seems like this restricts the airflow that you're taking in so you have to breathe harder. Let's get started. Made in USA, baby. Do not sleep with the training mask 2.0 on. Oh. So right out of the box, this training mask said it was set up to mimic an altitude of 9,000 feet. Unlike actually being at 9,000 feet, where the air would be less dense and there would be less oxygen per breath, the training mask seeks to emulate this by causing resistance. It would be similar to trying to breathe through a thin straw. So physiologically, it's not like the air has less oxygen in it, it's just I have to work harder to breathe. <laughs> Oh, this is putting some serious resistance on the airflow. Anyways, I'm gonna put this back on. We're gonna go hit a workout outside. We're gonna see how the elements plus this go hand in hand. Batman. <laughs> so starting off with a brisk jog for the warm up, everything felt good. That is until about 200 meters into the jog when all of a sudden I found myself really fighting for air and as you can tell, my jog really slowed down a lot. Getting to the outdoor workout area, I started working out and just like with the jog, the first couple of reps felt good until I was reaching about mid set reps five through seven where all of a sudden I felt like I really had to fight for air. I felt I really had to use my diaphragm, my intercostal muscles, like my whole entire belly to just get air in. There was a fatigue along with the fatigue. Now with this difficulty getting air in came somewhat of a panic like feeling. However, I was able to get over this mentally by just telling myself if I actually really do need air to come in, I can rip the mask off at any moment, but I was able to avoid that and we kept it on the entire time. It's like breathing is like no resistance at all now. We just did some basic upper body calisthenics and when we started, it was alright at first until I noticed that I got around like rep 10 of my push ups and like I just, I felt like my lips were going blue. Like just, I wasn't able to get enough oxygen in and like it felt like that so I really had to like breathe in hard. Other than that, there is a bit of like a, I don't know, some kind of smell. It's kind of like a rubbery synthetic smell. Uh, I don't know if that's the silicone inside or something like that. Um, it's supposed to be non-toxic, but yeah, it still kind of stinks. I'm certain that'll go away. Man, it feels good to breathe without that thing on right now. But yeah, this is going back on and um, we're going home. We're gonna take a shower and then I'm probably gonna clean this thing off as I wear it the rest of the day. Oh, I gotta get that rubber smell out of there. Oh. Now it is not recommended to just wear this thing all day, but I decided to do so anyways. My reasoning, besides just for the challenge for this video, with authentic altitude training, most of the physiological response doesn't necessarily come from training at the high altitudes, but comes over time living your daily life up at a high altitude, allowing your body to adjust to the low oxygen level, thus producing more red blood cells, etc., and allowing you to have more efficient oxygen consumption and be a beast when you come back down to lower altitudes. So I figured if I was trying to get the same physiological response with one of these training masks, I might have a better chance if I wore it as much as I could throughout the day, each and every day. Now obviously I took it off in the shower and I took it off when I ate and I also hand washed and cleaned this thing because of all the sweat I put on it after working out. But aside from that, I tried to just wear it when I was sitting around, relaxing or even working at my computer. Oh. Day two, everything felt stable. 
I decided to put the training mask right on from the get-go, obviously removing it in between sips of coffee, but wearing it most of the time working at my computer and doing other morning activities. Coming up to the workout on day two, I decided to attack legs with another outdoor calisthenics workout, this time lower body focused with plyometrics, which breathing wise felt very similar to the previous day's workout. About mid set, I would often have to really start breathing hard or stop and catch my breath. But other than that, nothing beyond what was expected. Now at the end of this workout, I decided to throw in a test that I thought would be very interesting, and that would be to head back to the track and see what my mile time would be while wearing the mask. And just like you would expect as I was reporting for my previous workouts, the first about 45 seconds felt totally fine, totally good, and then all of a sudden when I really needed air and I had to start breathing deeply, the resistance caused by the training mask started to become overwhelming and I had to slow my pace down, resulting in a mild time that was over a minute slower than without the mask just a few days ago. I could really start to feel those like inner costal muscles just like working. Like I feel as if I'm gonna be sore in the chest from the inside. Let's get out of here. And I don't know, maybe I shouldn't have jinxed myself. Maybe it was the accumulation of those two days of working out. Maybe it was going at a higher intensity for the mile. Or maybe it was just a combination of everything while wearing the training mask. But on day three, that intercostal soreness was significantly pronounced. It felt like every time I took a deep breath, my entire chest and ribcage region felt achy. It wasn't a good feeling and I literally just wanted to rest. So that I did. I actually really took it easy on day three. I didn't do any sort of working out, but I still tried to wear the training mask as much as I could this day to hopefully acclimate to it and come back stronger the next. However, midway through day three, I started to notice a little side effect that came about when wearing this thing for many hours. Oh. Whew. So something I've been realizing is that when I'm doing long bouts of activity, just like, you know, on my computer working or relaxing, like I notice I get to this point sometimes where I'm like, like breathing almost way shallower, kind of almost like a, apnea which probably not a good thing probably something you don't want probably why it's not recommended you wear this thing all the time um so like what i have to do to prevent that is like literally consciously make sure i'm breathing giving my breath effort like it's almost kind of like taking that instinct out of breathing where you don't even have to think about it you're just breathing and it's like i have to be more conscious about breathing because like i need to get this in like i think as long as i'm conscious about it and get the air in i should be all right hopefully i feel recharged for tomorrow On days four and five, I wanted to see how the training mask would affect weight training. I decided to do a lower body day on day four because my sternum region and intercostal muscles still felt very sore and I felt like any upper body compound movements might further aggravate it. But one thing that I noticed between these two days that was different is that when I was doing lower body weight training, it seemed like I needed to breathe a lot deeper. Now it was literally like this for every exercise and I think this is because the legs are such a large muscle group and require more oxygen which is why I was breathing deeper for all of those leg exercise movements relative to the arm exercise movements. Now on the upper body day it felt like I was able to get towards reps 6, 7, 8 before I really had to start to breathe in and fight the resistance of the mask. But by the end of day 5 I started to notice breathing through the mask feeling a lot easier. So I don't know if I'm getting more used to this thing or if maybe the arm workout isn't as oxygen demanding as the leg workout was but like I feel like it's not really doing anything <laughs> other than making that Darth Vader like noise. So maybe I'm getting used to it. You know what? Maybe we'll maybe we'll bump up the uh, altitude. So last night I was thinking, contrary to recommendations, we would give this thing a try while sleeping. You can see how this thing would definitely induce sleep apnea. Like literally, I mean, it basically happened to me without even sleeping. Just like I experienced, you know, in the earlier days and have been experiencing, you know, when I'm 
not consciously trying to breathe. You know, when you're sleeping, your autonomous nervous system especially takes over for breathing, and it's just like not enough to get through this thing, so it's like all of a sudden you're breathing good, and then all of a sudden you're really relaxing, and it's like and then you shock and wake up, right? Yeah, highly do not recommend wearing this thing while trying to sleep at all. I mean, it says that right in the manual, actually. I looked in the manual, it says, do not wear the training mask while sleeping. Yeah, I can see why, it totally makes sense. Because anything that interrupts sleep is going to not be good because sleep is a very, very important process when it comes to recovery, healing, and just getting better. So because this is interrupting sleep, I'm not gonna wear it while sleeping. But with that being said, Yesterday and today when I've been like standing up and just wearing this thing I do feel like I'm actually kind of like getting used to it. It's like a lot easier than it was on those early days So maybe we're actually Acclimating to this thing and that is why today I am actually going to dial up the notches a bit here I think I'm gonna go all the way so I doubled the resistance to maximum on the mask by essentially just closing off one valve, thus breathing through half the amount of space I was able to breathe through before. A very simple concept. It honestly did not feel too bad just sitting working at my computer for a few hours, but I would notice the most significant difference when I tried to exercise later this day. Alright folks, we are about to go on a run here. I'm actually running with my wife. I'm gonna see how far I can go. I don't know how far she's planning to go, but I, I'm gonna see and um, I'll get back to you guys. Yeah, just a jog today. Let's do it. So starting off with the jog, everything felt okay and it felt like it was going to be smooth, but then about a half mile in, I found myself really having to try extra hard to get air deep into my lungs. It's like I couldn't get a deep enough breath and it even led me to having to stop and walk for a minute, almost taking the training mass off just through instinct. I was able to take a minute, recover, and then finish my portion of the run, which I only ended up running two miles. So I decided to cut my workout day there, still wearing the mask as much as I could, except for the obvious things where I couldn't. Still at the 18,000 foot resistance level. Day seven, beginning to feel sore again in the intercostal region, probably due to the increase in breathing resistance, I decided to take this day completely off and basically sit around and do nothing except for just eat, relax, and wear the mask. Hopefully to acclimate to this resistance so that hopefully by the next day when we tested our fitness, we would see some significant results. So right here, 11.45 on day eight, it is exactly one week since we started wearing this thing. All that's left is to test our fitness and see if we've improved. The first thing I'm gonna do is test my mile time, and then with only five minutes of rest, we're gonna do max push-ups in two minutes, and then two minutes of rest, and then followed by maximum amount of pull-ups. Let's go to the track. So I went back to the track where we did the first mile test at, and apparently they close early today, so I actually had to come to this other track here. The surface is black, so it might be a little hotter, but it's still the, what do you say, the authentic, you know, quarter mile per lap, essentially. I feel like breathing's easy, but will that play over into actual running? Let's find out. Here we go. Oh, it's hot. Same shoes, similar shorts. Four laps. Really nothing to it but to do it. The first lap felt strong, very similar to the first lap when I tested this a week ago. Now the previous week, I really didn't start falling apart until the end of lap two. However, this time, I felt very consistent throughout lap two as well as lap three. Something I can't say I've ever experienced before when doing a four lap track test. While still difficult, it felt like my breathing was easier and I was able to just take deeper breaths. This consistency combined allowed me to go all out on the last lap and finally achieving a goal I've been trying to hit for so long now. Ah. 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 <sighs> Keeping the test consistent, resting for five minutes and then attempting maximum push-ups in two minutes, I was only able to hit 54. Ah. Then just like the previous week, resting for only two minutes and then attempting max pull-ups, I was able to only hit about 15 or 16, depending on how you count that last breath. Ah. 
one week of wearing the training mask, I have reduced my mile time by about 25 seconds. We finally broke six. That is so, like, I am so happy. That makes me wanna like shoot for 530 and then shoot for like 459, you know what I mean? Like, it, it just makes me hungry. But before I get ahead of myself and just become an all out runner, what I gotta say is, 25 seconds of improvement in only one week, was it due to the mask? In my honest opinion from what I just experienced, I have to say, yes. I think it actually helped me improve my, I would say, lung capacity or ability to breathe air in deeply while I was running so that I could knock off 20 seconds to my mile time. I am not even kidding you. I'm not just saying that. They did not pay me to say that. I bought this with my own money. I really think this actually worked for that specific distance of running at least for me. Now when it came to muscular endurance and all the other stuff I was kind of dabbling with with training this week, I don't think this really did much at all, to be honest with you. A lot of the times it was just annoying and really kind of like marked up my nose here. Now when it comes to wearing this thing all day long, I don't think it's worth it wearing this thing all day long, you know, having this on your face and like the smell, like I don't know, is the smell okay? That smell is actually still there by the way. So there is one more important thing that I feel like should be mentioned. I didn't film this process that much, but I washed this thing a ton. Literally every time after I was done working out with warm water, a little bit of soap, even this part right here, I washed it off, I dried it off as good as I could before putting it back on. I think that's extremely important because think about it, if you are gonna wear this thing, even just while working out, you're gonna be breathing that in deeply. You don't wanna have like concentrations of bacteria just going into your esophagus, into your lungs, etc. You could see how that could end up badly. They do not recommend this while sleeping. I do not recommend this while sleeping. After this experiment, I don't even recommend wearing this thing just around day to day. I think when you forget about trying to breathe, you know, you're gonna end up shallow breathing and that's not gonna be good for you. You know, when you're sleeping, you could be waking up with apnea, disrupting your sleep. That's not gonna be good for you. And that's the difference. You see, when you go train at altitude, it's not like the air is, you know, being restricted through a straw or like a valve or something. You know, you can still take deep breaths with the same amount of effort. You're just getting less dense air with less oxygen density so that when you're breathing in, your body's like, well, we're not getting as much oxygen as we're used to. So let's create some of those markers that, you know, help us absorb oxygen better. I think like more red blood cells, your body basically adapts to the low oxygen. And then when you go back down to sea level, it's like, oh, holy moly, I can run for miles, right? In my opinion, I don't think this works those same mechanisms. I think what this does is work those muscles for breathing to make breathing more effortless to help you get that oxygen in deeper, which is why I think wearing this while training any cardiovascular activity is just another layer you can add on for resistance for your body to overcome, which can help you get better at running once you take this off or any cardiovascular activity once you take this thing off. It's a very different set of mechanisms from actual altitude training versus wearing the, we'll call it resistance mask or training mask. One more thing I wanna say is that maybe if you wanna mimic these results and your breathing isn't good to begin with, something you can do is try to focus on being more of a nose breather than a mouth breather. I do have a video on that where I literally tried to breathe only through my nose for an entire week coming from someone who is a chronic mouth breather. And like that created a lot of resistance as well. I really felt like breathing through my nose helps stimulate like a stronger intercostal muscle connection. And I feel like before hopping on buying one of these resistance masks or something, maybe check yourself and see, are you a nose breather or mouth breather? If you're a chronic mouth breather like I was, maybe try to really focus on breathing through the nose just through your day-to-day -day activities before, you know, buying something for resistance and trying to, you know, amp up. It's kind of like get your nutrition in check before you start taking supplements. You know what I'm saying? It's like work on the foundation, you know? If you are interested in my body weight training program, I've been getting a ton of great feedback on that program. Go to onlykindsfitness.com and check out Body Weight Beast 2.0. That's my 12 week calisthenics program that you can virtually do anywhere. Also, if you're interested in a more accelerated program, we have been getting some great feedback on our one month plan and our one month plan volume two. Our intense streamlined one month workouts that can help you get back into shape, get that flexibility and mobility back and just get you going so you can tackle more avenues of fitness from a good base. It's just a great overall program. So much great feedback on that. Check that out as well. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I'm so glad you guys are enjoying these videos. I have more coming out, so stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe. I hope you all have a great day. Peace. I will see you all in the next video.